Hi everyone, this is Nicole Schumann, social media editor from This Built America, and today we are interviewing uh, Representative Cesar Veles from the Fisher Space Pen Company, um, they are fe our featured uh, company this week. They are out of Nevada, and they have a really cool and interesting product that a lot of people, you know, may not have realized the importance of it um, without hearing the story. Um, Caesar is the assistant plant manager and has been with Fisher uh, quite a while. So we're going to hear a little bit about the company from him today. Hi, Caesar. How are you? Hi, pretty good. Yourself? Pretty good. Now, how many years have you been with, with Fisher, and, and how did you end up there? Uh, officially, I've been with the company for about 24 years. Uh, I've been involved in the pen industry itself since the age of 14. Uh, I started looking for a summer job, and uh, I came upon uh, a couple of gentlemen that were having coffee in the morning while, while looking for that summer job. And I asked the uh, the gentleman if they had any work. Uh, right off the bat, they kind of said, "No, we really don't have any work for you." So I said, "Okay, well, thank you." So as, as I start walking away, one of the gentlemen says, "Oh my God, come back, come back!" He didn't realize that he had just gotten an order for about twenty-five thousand units that he had to put together. So I had a. Uh, summer job for that summer and the, the summer after that and the summer after that and then when the gentleman moved away uh, he was in uh, California at the time he relocated to Las Vegas Nevada and uh, he he offered me a uh, job if I ever wanted to change uh, pace a little bit and 24 years later here I am today <laughs> so that man was with the Fisher Fisher Pen Company Yes, he's 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 been an affiliate in front of the company for forty some years. So you didn't start out then in Boulder City. That was somewhere you had to relocate. Yes, uh, I I started out in the pen uh, industry in Van Nuys, California, where the company was was at. I believe they they moved out of uh, Van Nuys, California, in nineteen seventy six, and relocated to Nevada. Hmm. Do you know the reasoning for the relocation of the company? I think expansion really was 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 the the factor. Okay. What was uh, Fisher like when you first started out? Um, has it changed quite a bit? Uh, it, it's changed quite a bit. Uh, when I started working here, it it was the the majority of the people were I would say in their mid forties to mid sixties. We have seen people retire, and we're we're seeing a little bit younger group come on board, and we have three to four times more uh, uh, work than we had back when I started. So the company has definitely been progressing, and it's been growing quite a bit. It seems like employees really like to stay with Fisher for for quite a while. Um, and that's rare nowadays, you know, people trying to find a good place to work, um, something that they enjoy. Why do you think employees stay with uh, Fisher for so long? I, I think really the main uh, factor behind that is, is just it's just such a family-oriented company. Uh, once you join with the company, uh, its owners really, really focus on taking care of its employees for the long term. What are some of the benefits that you guys, uh, you know, enjoy from working there? Well, you know, um, you you get to uh, to t to tinker a lot with physical parts. It's really interesting. Not one day is the same. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I I think uh, you know, re uh, people really get involved in what they're doing and really enjoy it. So when you started at Fisher, what? you know what were you doing you didn't start out as an assistant uh, plant manager so what what was your climb like um I really started on the assembly line just uh, you know uh, putting pens together picking up body ends and putting connectors in them and pre pressing them and you know hand operated machinery uh, that's how I started I later moved into being an international salesman 
which I was traveling down to Mexico one once a year and expanding the business there and uh, I did that for a few years and uh, then I moved into management so I've I've been uh, in in management for like 15 years and uh, along the lines I've I've designed the uh, displays likes of uh, Brookstone uh, Robinson's May Sharper Image that kind of stuff so I've 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 pretty much done it all here at Fisher Penn. Do you think it helps out in your you know your sales experience to have had that you know that on the line that manufacturing experience um, you know to really know how things are put together? You know I really think it helps a lot because when you're at, at a trade show for say I mean when when somebody asks you a question as to how it's built you know what kind of quality goes into the product you're building. I mean, you really have a vast knowledge of your product because you've worked in pretty much every every position within the company. So you know, as 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 people are asking you, well, what makes you different from Bic per se? Well, number one, it's American made. We build a product that will last you your whole lifetime. So you know, it's it's like owning a uh, an antique. Car. I myself have a 1969 Ford Mach 1 that my mother gave me when I was uh, about 15 and a half years old. I still have it, and I'm very proud of it. So, and and then there again, you know, I plan to pass that on to my son when he comes of age. So, the product we build really, really, you know, uh, is uh, is is truly personal to you. Hmm. Yeah, you mentioned that it's personal. You know, we were talking uh, earlier about technology and how so many people are, you know, just using computers every day. Um, I guess on a personal level, you know, why are why are pens still important? Well, you know, I think pens really help you write down your deepest and more most uh, personal thoughts. It's 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 information that comes from you you can pick up your notebook and you know plan for the future let's say and it's right next to your drawer now what am I looking forward to in the future you just wrote it down last night ah yes maybe I want to become a president so it seems that dreams have more of a, a chance of you know becoming reality when they're really right in front of you and, and you actually physically take part in writing them down Correct. What um you know you've been at the company for a long time, and we, you know we feature a lot of companies here in America that have had some struggles um, building things here. Uh, ha what you know what challenges has Fisher mm -hmm. Space Pen overcome since you've been there? Well, I mean, I think our biggest challenge is uh. uh Competing with with pens that are made in China. I mean, you can buy a, a a bag of ten pens for you know ninety nine cents at the ninety nine cent store. But I mean, I mean, you really have no no emotional connection to those products. You use them and throw them away. The products we make are made in the USA. Uh, the people that build them, you know, their heart and soul goes into those products. So we're truly building something that's going to last you, like I say, your entire lifetime if you take care of it. So the pens aren't disposable. Um, you guys create reusable pens. And for those you know, younger people that aren't used to that, can you explain how that works? Well, I mean, I, I think the, the just the whole essence of writing, you know, I, I think... Uh, we need to re-educate our younger population that it is important. It is important to keep up on your penmanship. It is important to, uh, at, at the end of the school day, sit down and write in your journal. You know, I mean, what, uh, what, what it was that you know you did for 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 your whole day. I mean, what key things are memorable to me? 
You know, so I I think we need to re uh, reinvigorize the people to actually take pen to paper. You know, write about your life. How do the pens last so long? Is there a refill system? How does that work? Um, our pens write so long because the ink, it, it's actually like tar. It's super thick and gummy. And our, our, our points kind of act, act like, like a little saw blade that as it turns, it rips the ink and then it heats the ink in, in the point and then it lays out. And um, our pens write for about an average of three miles. That's about three times longer than the average pen. And our pens write upside down, extreme heat, underwater, in a zero vacuum of space. You can bury a pen and you know uh, uh, unearth it 50 years from now, and it'll still write. Wow. Our, our refills are, are are sealed and pressurized. So, have you guys tested the the three miles with the pen? <laughs> yes, um, we actually have uh, write test machines that that we are constantly putting uh, uh, our, our our refills onto, and they'll write out the uh, three miles. Some go longer, some a little bit less, but an, an average is about three miles. That's fascinating. That's really cool, um, and it's great that you guys have machines that as well to test things out. Um, you've been at the company for a long time. What is, you know, one of the greatest days that you've had at the company? I think I got to say the greatest day for me was, uh, I, I think it was in, in, in mid-2000. We actually had three huge clients of ours order for Christmas holiday. We worked a 32-hour shift nonstop to be able to fulfill those orders. And at the at, at the end of the day, when we filled that last semi truck, you know, it, it kind of felt like uh, you know you uh, saved a national monument from burning down. I mean, the sense of pride, you know, that we we that we were able to uh, fulfill all those orders, and the whole company was pulling together. You know, we had piles high of loaded displays, you know, just all over the shop. So, so yeah, I mean, I think the, the, the sense of pride that, that, that we really focus on uh, taking care of, of our customers. That seems to be, uh, you know, a common occurrence with American-made companies that because they're located on you know the, in the same soil as as their you know clients that they really can take on these big and get them done. Um, you know we've talked to other companies uh, that have done you know similar things like Liberty Bottle and you know really just the workers really enjoy seeing how they can push themselves to get these things done and you know provide a good service for the clients. Well, you know, I mean, I, I think part of the reason of uh, being a um, US company and and having most of your client ba base within the United States you know you have the companies that that I import most of their stuff from China you know you never know when that freighter is gonna sink you might not get your product that yeah that does happen um, you, you know, know I mean boxes <laughs> falling off the freighters and things that does happen it's it's common so yeah that's understandable so at least with a place like you guys, they're you know guaranteed that they will be getting their product. So that's nice to hear. Right. Um, I know you know you said a lot of younger people are starting to come into the company you know to replace other positions. In the news, there's been a lot of talk of um, you know uh, uh, not enough skills uh, skilled workers to fill these positions. What would you suggest for young people to do um, if they are looking to get into that manufacturing track? Well, you know, um, I really think it's it starts uh, at, at high school level when you when you start, uh, you know, a uh, wood shop or metal shop. I mean, that that really gets you started on 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 that route. You know, uh, I I know when I was going to high school. 
I mean, I, I was involved in, 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 in wood shop and metal shop. And uh, when, once I, I, I graduated, I mean, I really liked to, 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 to work with machine, machinery and, and build things. And it really gives you a sense of pride to know that you built something with your hands and that, you know, someone else is going to be able to use it. That's what it, what it seems like. But, yeah, there are a lot of these jobs available and, you know, hopefully there will be people that are willing to take them because they are good jobs and, you know, they, someone needs to do them. So hopefully we'll see more of that. Um, now we talked a little bit about, you know, what Made in America means for Fisher Pen and, and for their clients and purchasers. But what has it meant? for the Boulder City community, um, having the, the plant there? You know, I, I, I kind of compare it to, uh, to having a, a, uh, an iron mill in, in, in a small town. You know, um, there's a lot of people that, that depend on their jobs. And, and uh, you know, you, you have generations of uh, people and their families that have worked here. Uh, in my case, I mean, I, I plan to uh, uh, bring my son in when he comes of age and, you know, start teaching him how to run machinery and, and, and see how things are built. I, I think it, it is important for us to do that with a younger generation so we can keep building America. Do the, um, the children of the employees, do you see them ever around the plant? Do they, you know, show a lot of interest in what you guys are doing? Uh, they definitely show interest, you know, uh, I mean, they, their their eyes really light up when you let them uh, tinker around with the parts and show them what the different machines do. So, yes, there there, uh, there is a lot of interest there. How much of the pens are, you know, made with the machinery versus made by hand? How does that work? Now, as um, we have some machinery that is that, that, that is automated, but I would say about... 80% of our pens are made, you know, handmade. And, and how does that work? Like, I guess if you could walk us through, you know, just an example of a pen being put together. Okay, so a, a, a pen put together consists of about 8 to 10 parts. You have your, your barrel, which in, invo uh, in, involves a, a nose tip, a spring, and a connector. The nose tip is uh, put on by hand on a machine. The spring gets dropped in by hand. The connector gets dropped in by hand and then it gets pressed on, on an air press. Uh, when we move into the cap, our, our caps usually consist of the cap casing and a clip that gets staked on uh, by hand. Okay. That's interesting. It's and it's probably a process that hasn't changed quite drastically throughout the years. Am I correct? Yes. I mean, I I, I gotta say we we've, we've been doing it like that ever since the 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 uh, inception of the company. That's great. You know, um, when you talk about pens that get made in 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 uh, China, you know you dump all your parts in, on one end of the machine and they come out packaged on the other side of the machine. There is no soul to those kind of products. You guys have been doing such a good job, you know, over the years. What, you know, what can we expect for the future for the company? Well, we are currently working on a couple designs that are going to come to market pretty soon. Uh, there is one that has a dual stylus. There, there is a lot of people, especially in the medical field, that do most of their writing on their iPads. So there's uh, on on one end we have a fine point stylus, and on the other end we have a bold point stylus. The uh, the uh, bold point stylus is is mainly for for pointing and clicking, where the fine point stylus you can actually physically handwrite your notes on your iPad. And we also have a, uh, it's called a, a, a tough touch, which we're, we're designing for the outdoor market. Uh, that would hang on your uh, backpack 
or on your pant loop and you just pull it out and you can write with the pen or I, I write with the stylus on the other end. Hmm. I feel like that would be great for, you know, not just doctors or anything like that, but a lot of people nowadays that, you know, utilize technology and, you know, still writing utensils. So that you sounds know, great. Um, I, I, I got to serve on uh, jury duty not too long ago. And both lawyers on both sides had their stylus pens with their iPads. So I mean that that tells me that there is a huge demand for that kind of product. Mm -hmm. And I think there's still a demand for pens. You know, um, technology is important, but you know there are still people that like to write down their grocery lists and cross things out or. You know, a lot of people that use post-it notes and put them all over the place, or you know, what are what are some of the ways you've used a pen, Caesar? Well, for for me, the 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 greatest use that I had for the pens we make was uh, romancing my wife into marriage. I wrote her a lot of love letters, and we still to this day sit down and read them together, and it's something memorable. It's something we're always going to have. That's wonderful. There's a lot of love letters that still need to be written. So, yes, there thing, is. Good thing you guys are still making the pens to do that. <laughs> Appreciate it. You know, um, back when I was in junior high, um, I had a pen pal in another school district. So teachers really promoted that 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 you write. You know. And I mean, I, I I I hope to see that come back someday to the uh, you know for for younger people. Writing is important. There's something to be said for getting a a letter, a personal letter in the mail versus getting an email. That's just a little bit more exciting uh, than just getting something in your inbox. That's for sure. So that's something to think about <laughs> for a lot of people. Well, thank you so much, Caesar. Appreciate it. Appreciate the time, and um, you know, we really enjoyed featuring Space Pen this week. And you know, hope you guys still are producing great things, and can't wait to see some of the new um, inventions from you. You know, well, we're really looking forward to helping America keep writing its future. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.